Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Manscaped has the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it's guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts or your chest because you can use it upstairs and downstairs. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. What is the fantasy versus the reality usually like when it comes to threesomes? And if I was somebody who wanted to suggest to my partner about engaging in a threesome, what's the best way to go about it? And what are the most common pitfalls? It's a great question. So to step back for a second, when I ask people about their favorite fantasy of all time, I also ask them, have you ever shared this fantasy with a partner? Have you ever acted on it? Do you want to act on it? As well. And what I find is that about 80% of my participants say that they want to act on their favorite fantasy, no matter what it is, but only about half of them say they've ever shared that fantasy, and only about one in five have ever actually acted on it. So there's a pretty big gap between fantasy and reality with people carrying around a lot of fantasies that they do want to act on, but have never yet found an opportunity or the confidence or opportunity uh, to do so. So when it comes to threesome fantasies specifically, I find that that really does seem to be the single most common fantasy, but it's also the fantasy that is least likely to turn out well when people act on it. And I think a big part of the reason for that is because most people don't really have a script for how that should go, right? They understand the dynamics of two-person sex, but what happens when you bring another person into the bedroom? Who does what with whom and when? And how do you navigate that, figure it out? How do you ensure that nobody feels left out, that everybody's getting their needs met? And so I think it's oftentimes that uncertainty that is a big problem in threesomes and group encounters, but it's also often having these like really sky high expectations that are different across different partners where they've envisioned the scenario going different ways. And when I look at the ways that that people describe their threesome fantasies, most people fantasize about being the center of attention. Well, if everybody's fantasizing about being the center of attention, you know, that's sort of a recipe for disaster when you go in because, you know, people aren't feeling like they're getting what they want. And so I think it's really important to understand when it comes to threesomes that they require a lot of advanced communication and communication during the act to figure out what it is that people want so that everybody leaves that situation feeling like they got their needs met and feel satisfied. I think more often than not, people kind of like jump into threesomes without having that advanced discussion or negotiation. And that's where things often tend to go wrong, where it just kind of, it's a threesome that happens spontaneously rather than having it being planned um, and negotiated where you can actually figure those things out. So communication is really one of the big keys. Yeah. And both of my threesome experiences, there was always someone being left out. One of them was me. And then the other time was the girl's boyfriend who she brought into the scenario. I was not interested in it, but I was like, okay, whatever, fine. Suck his dick if you really want me to. Um, But yeah, I mean, there was definitely no communication in either one of those. So speaking of communication, if I was in a relationship and I wanted to suggest to my partner the idea of a threesome, what's the best way to go about that? And how do I avoid any issues of jealousy or perhaps a partner questioning whether or not I really want to be in a monogamous relationship? It's a great question. And I get asked this all the time about a range of fantasies. How do I share this fantasy? You know, for example, I get a lot of men who write me through my website and say, I really want to watch my wife or girlfriend sleep with other men. How do I make this happen? And so, you know, my advice first, just kind of regardless of what your fantasy is, is to make sure that you have really solid sexual communication in your relationship. And if you've never shared fantasies before, it's probably best to step back and start low and go slow. Start by sharing some of your tamer sexual fantasies and identifying some of your common sexual interests before you jump into the more adventurous things or things that involve bringing other people into the bedroom because you really need to build up that trust and intimacy and communication to have really successful encounters where you take fantasy and turn it into reality. Uh, So that's a big part of it. Another part is when you're sharing a fantasy with a partner, 
to present it in a way that validates them. Because a lot of people feel threatened when their partner shares a fantasy with them because they think that it means that you're dissatisfied and that there's something wrong with them or with the relationship. And it doesn't matter. This fantasy can be about anything. It doesn't have to be a group thing. It could be a passion and romance fantasy. And there are some people who will find that to be threatening because they take it personally. So I think it's really important Mm -hmm. when you're sharing a fantasy to validate your partner, tell them how hot and sexy and attractive you think they are and how you love the sex that you're having and how, you know, you have this idea for this thing that you could try together. And here's what both of us can get out of it rather than presenting it as like, Hey, I want to have a threesome, you know, and making it sound like this is just for you rather than something that's, that's for them. So, you know, that communication, that validation piece, uh, I think is really important and also choosing the right timing. Like when do you share your sexual fantasies? So, you know, try to do it at a moment when you're already both sexually aroused because sexual arousal tends to reduce your disgust response. And so it's more likely that you'll be receptive to each other's fantasies if you can do this in a moment when you're both kind of in the mood rather than, you know, over the breakfast table or, you know, spontaneously at some other point during the day. Mm -hmm. Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that will not only not nick or snag your nuts, but can also be used on your chest hair. If you get it in the Perfect Package 3.0, it will come with a bunch of liquid formulas to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day. And for a limited time, you can also get a free travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs that come with it. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you wanna listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.